All right, y'all. It's your boy Carcino. I'm back. I am back. All right, my grandmother comes first. You know, 80th birthday. That's a milestone. So I had to go do that. But now we're back. Let's talk about the Showtime car. And oh my God, Knockout Kings 2 lived up to the to the billing. It was unbelievable. Okay. Flat out unbelievable. Now, start off with the first fight of the night with Keith Thurman. You was like, a lot of people like, why they start off with Keith Thurman and uh, Diego Chavez? That should have went to the least the co-main event. But hey, they know what they're doing. <laughs> that was a good way to get everybody in there and make sure they was watching right away. That fight was. I mean, pedal to the metal, man, mano y mano, both guys willing to win, both guys are in a thrust to see who is the bigger, stronger man, and I've been telling people for a while, you know, this is the guy they say hits harder than Lucas Matisse, and I can see where they talk about his power, it was clear in the first four rounds, his power was moving Thurman around him. Thurman couldn't fight him toe to toe like that. That if he fought that kind of fight, he was going to eventually lose. Keith Thurman showed me other elements that we all had questions about with him. Because the type of opposition he fought were there basically to get a paycheck. They weren't there to really beat Keith Thurman. And in this fight, he had to use a lot of different elements. He had to use side to side. He had to, to know when the box. He used an up jab. And he can take a good punch. You know, we all wanted to know what would happen if he gets hit with a good flush shot from a big, strong uh, competitor just as himself and somebody who's just as strong. He showed he could back up, take some steps back, use his jab, and use some boxing ability that... A lot of people didn't know he had, and I, I was very, um, very impressed. He actually took the game plan that Diego wanted to use for him, and that was to try to let Keith steam himself out early and then try to take him out late, but both guys was in tremendous shape, and they put on a great performance. And then Thurman with that body shot knockout, knockdown, I mean... I don't think he fully recovered from that. Coming right about the 10th round, wipe out. He was dazed with a left uppercut, double left hook. It was a hook slash uppercut. And that was it. All she wrote for him. And the, the co-main event, where did this guy come from? From Japan. This, uh, what's his name? Nihoto? Or Nihito? Oh, a coward? I mean, my goodness. Where did that come from? You talk about just getting caught cold. Figueroa got caught cold because he didn't know what was going on in the first round. Like, whoa. Then, in, you know, in two, he got that knockdown. But, oh, my God. These guys were killing each other in round three, five, six. And then Figueroa got him down in the six. You thought it would, you know, okay, okay, this guy finna break down, but oh my god, this guy was coming on late. Then a rock a while, came back strong some more. You know, it was like this is a fight where I think a lot of people underestimated. Like figure, I mean, this this guy from Japan, like who knew him? I mean, the guy had two losses coming into this. This was just supposed to be a little tough competitor that, you know, figure was supposed to get out of here. Both guys had to go to the hospital after this. They were throwing bombs, straight bombs, and you know, hats off to Figueroa, but he. <laughs> Hey, he can't underestimate these guys because, man, my goodness, I was shocked. The, the main event, the main, main, main event, <laughs> Andre Berto versus Soto Carras. I mean, from the opening bell, 
we all knew this is a 50-50 fight. If you didn't know this is a 50-50 fight, then you were in the wrong house. I mean, to have Birdo that close in the fight was crazy. If you look at the scorecards, they had it 105-103 on, on the card for Birdo. Then it was 105-103 for Karras and one card even when they stopped the fight. It's like, are you joking? I mean, watching this fight, I could see they had an NWO referee in there to start it off. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. This referee is calling stuff slips, that's knockdowns. He's doing anything he can to try to get Berto over that hump. And, and they said Berto had problems with his right shoulder. But what would explain the first three, four rounds when he was he, his shoulder seemed just fine and he was getting relaxed <laughs> in the ring, you know, and I don't understand it. Berto was hurt so many times in this fight and I give him credit for having a lot of heart, but he seemed very confused on what it is that he wanted to do in the fight. He cannot fight a guy with pressure. He cannot measure distance. He he still can't do that and he's being controlled. They, this is Soto Karras is one of the, the weakest fighters they they can give you. That That's a pressure fighter, really. So if you want to make big time money, these are the fights you got to win, buddy. So you can say my shoulder, I come to fight and this and that, but I can't even blame Virgil Hunter. You got two Amir Khans on your hand. You got two guys that are stuck in the mud and they're the same type of fighter. You know, they, they got the fast punches, but if you put some pressure on them, they crack. They crack. And Inberto's chin is not what it used to be. I mean, he got a lot of heart, ton of heart, but it's just not the same. <clears throat> I think maybe he take one more fight in his hometown and then, you know, call it a day. You know, I mean, really. At this point, it's about your health. He's taken too many grueling fights. And I just think it's time. I think it's time to just call it a career. I really do. You know, your family's in the martial arts. Go try one MMA fight. But I don't even think he should fight. He, he's made good money. He's made a lot of good money. I mean, there's other things to do. Start looking for other things because of the style that he fights. There's no way he can continue at this pace.